guys, Chad Rudolph Electronic Repair here. Uh, welcome to the channel first if you haven't been here before. Uh, feel free to uh, like and subscribe on the video if you like it. Comment if you have any questions or comments. And let's see what we got in the shop today guys. Hey guys, uh, we have a Lorentz Elite 5 HDI on the bench today. Uh, customer complaint on this unit was, um, unit doesn't power up, just totally dead, right? So I just want to run through uh, what we did and what we found and how we're going to fix it, okay? Let me just get this seal back on here so we don't misplace it. Um... Okay, so when we were initially testing this unit here on the bench, uh, press the power button, nothing on the power supply. <clears throat> Wiggle the power button, you know, just to make sure it's not a bad connection, nothing on the power supply. No current being drawn. Took the back off, checked our voltage coming in, we got 12, that's good. Checked at the uh, input inductor, 12, that's good. Checked it down through here, we shorted our power MOSFET here, still nothing. Checked it, looks good. Checked our comparator, looks good. Checked some other voltages, they seem okay. And <clears throat> where I have these wires going right here, that's where, um, that's where the five volt is generated for the, the processor. Okay, the problem with the, the Elite unit, that's the five Elite HDI unit is, obviously it's missing what? One of these guys, right? No CPU card. Well, that's because they soldered the processor directly to the motherboard. Save some money, I guess. Uh, which makes it more difficult to troubleshoot, obviously. Because how are we going to test to see if we're getting 5 volts to our processor? Well, it's a BGA chip, so we can't uh, access the solder balls underneath it. Uh, so what do we do? Well, this chip that goes here, it's actually under the microscope right now. Right there. Uh, that controls or generates the 5 volts. So it takes some input voltage from the board and spits out 5 volts, right? Okay, so what we did is while that chip was still soldered on there, <clears throat> we checked, uh, well, let me pull up the data sheet here. See that? It's the data sheet for this chip. We're looking at this diagram right here. Okay, so pin one is output. Uh, pin eight is VCC, that's incoming voltage, okay? unregulated incoming voltage and ground which is pin 7 so uh, if we take our probe we ground our uh, the black probe the ground to chassis ground or, or just board ground power supply ground whatever we have good ground uh, take the positive side of the probe and we go to um, VCC okay so we have our power supply still plugged in Give me a quick sec, guys. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. So, yeah, we were checking VCC. I think that's where I left off. Uh, so, ground the black probe, positive probe VCC. Uh, power was plugged in uh, in zero, like literally zero. Uh, no no floating voltages, nothing, just zero. Okay, that's kind of kind of weird. Uh, press the power button zero that's on vcc guys to that chip that's not right uh obviously the output's going to be zero we checked it anyway zero so um normally i mean if there's you know no power going to uh, the supply of a chip or something like that you're going to get some sort of voltage millivolts or something right zero is what you would see uh in a direct short to ground Okay, so if you took 
your volt ohm meter here let me let me bring it up okay so we got our volt meter up there <clears throat> you can see right right there so we're gonna put our black probe on ground and you can see it's sort of floating see that you know millivolts you know but if you take your positive probe positive probe and you put that on ground also look what happens zero no floating zero so based on that information it tells me that the chip that was right here most likely is shorted internally okay the the VCC supply may be other parts of the chip also but definitely the VCC supply is shorted to ground 100% so let's test it right <clears throat> pop the chip out okay we took the chip out of circuit and then we took our volt ohm meter and we tested VCC and we're getting around 8 volts so there you go chip is shorted chips bad okay so what are we gonna do about that uh, we don't have the chip I thought we had them in stock we don't I will try to order them if I can locate them chips are hard to come by these days you never know what's gonna be sold out or not in stock or you know whatever so this is a 7986A, okay? So the data sheet tells us, as I mentioned, it's a, scroll up here, step down switching regulator. Three amp step down switching regulator. So what is the difference, <clears throat> excuse me, so what's the difference between this chip and this board? This is an off-the-shelf buck converter, okay? A buck converter is a step-down switching regulator, right? I mean, it's a step-down, takes a, a higher voltage so source, excuse me, and uh, based on how you adjust the little pot, the little trim pot, it'll adjust that voltage down to a certain level. So if we took this board, excuse me, um, if we took this board, okay, hooked it up to VCC, VCC, and ground, Again, VCC was, was it pin 8? I don't remember. Uh, VCC. Um, yeah, pin 8. So hook this up to VCC, right? And then we take our, our, our probes to the output of this uh, buck converter. Press the power button on the unit. That's going to give us an output here. Adjust that buck converter to 5 volts. Exactly 5 volts, right? Take the output of that buck converter. Put it on pin 1, which is where the output of the, the chip would normally be, right? Shouldn't it work? I mean, you'd think. All we're doing is we're, we're using an external board to generate that 5 volts. We don't need any external sources or anything like that because the VCC only gets supplied when you press the power button. Okay, and then our comparator circuit down here latches that voltage on. Good to go, I think. Okay, so let's give it a shot. So this is exactly what I did, what I said. So the input voltage to this board... I grabbed off of VCC, which is pin 8. Ground just goes to ground on, on here, which is pin 7. I mean, I could have tacked it anywhere, but I put it on pin 7. And pin 1 is my output of the, of the buck converter. 
Let's see if this is going to work. Might toast the whole thing. Who knows? Let's hope not. Okay. Power supply's on. Uh, let me see if you guys can see that. Give me a quick sec. There you go. So, power supply. Where is it? Right there. Top is voltage. Bottom is current. So, ready? This works. Three, two, one. <laughs> there we go, guys. Look at that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to let this thing boot. I'm going to pause real quick. Let this thing boot up, and then I'll get right back. All right, guys, we're booted up. Now, a big thing I wanted to check is powering this unit off, okay? Just to make sure the comparator is doing its job and, and all that stuff. So press the power button. Oh, let's press enter first. Power button. Let's go to power off. Ready? Okay, keep an eye on uh, the current draw right here. And there we go, guys. This one's done. Fixed. Okay, fixed. We didn't have the original chip, but we got her done. We fixed it anyway. And it's it's literally no difference. I mean, this, this still functions the same exact way. There's a little bit larger board here um, instead of that chip, but I think, you know, we're going to take some uh, coating. We're going to coat the bottom of the board. I think that should fit just fine. Let's let's check though, just temporarily. Obviously, we're not going to leave it like this. We're going to mount it properly. But let's see. Let's see. Let's make sure. All right, guys. I think we found a place for it. Look at that, sealed up. I'm going to super carefully pull this off. Right there. Right there. Okay. I'm just going to mark it with my Sharpie just so I know roughly where it needs to go again. There. Okay. Uh, and on top of that flash chip, looks like. Let me try it one more time before we secure anything. Yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Let's use some high temp hot glue here. Then we're actually going to use some uh, silicon adhesive around the board itself, but the hot glue will give me some immediate stick to the board. And then the silicon adhesive will be more long term uh, to keep the board on there. And using hot glue initially allows the the uh, silicon to cure without it moving let's try this again make sure I got the right spot yeah it looks perfect guys Okay, got some adhesive here, silicon.
Okay, good enough. And what we're going to want to do is route those wires. Maybe use some more hot glue just to uh, keep them in place. There, how's that, guys? Looks good. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's give this one more test, and if everything works, I'm going to say this guy is done. A little corrosion on the sonar connector. Oh, by the way, there was, I forgot to mention, there was some corrosion all along the bottom of the board here, initially. So definitely, this unit's definitely seeing water. Inside inside the unit which uh, I mean it's impossible to get these things watertight from the factory at least they're, they're just not let's kill the power real quick okay just wanted to make sure what happened was I plugged in power and then I plugged in the sonar cable when you plug in sonar to these guys if there's 12 volts going to it, they'll kick on. So just wanted to make sure it wasn't a problem with the power on circuit. And three, two, one. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pause real quick. Once this thing's booted, we're going to make sure that sonar is working perfect. And there we go, guys. 9.8, 9.9 depth is perfect for my transducer setup here. And this one's done.